Hello everyone, and welcome back. My name is Meanchit Mew, and today I'm going to be going over the Pokemon Sword and Shield Pokedex. I had done a video before about the game guide to Pokemon Sword and Shield, the strategy guide, and today I'm going to be doing the Pokedex. This guide came out on January 7th of 2020. It was originally supposed to come out in December. In my la in the video with the guide, they had a um, placard inside stating that, you know, late December of 2019. Unfortunately, the guide never came. You know, Amazon or the Pokemon company kept delaying it. And so now we finally have it. So this Pokedex, if you're not familiar with what a, uh, a Pokedex is as far as like the book goes, um, it's basically a detailed description of all the Pokemon attainable in the games, gives a detailed description as far as like attacks, what it can learn, um, when it evolves and how it evolves. Um, it also comes with like all the attacks listed in the entire game as well as abilities, items, um, it even has some of the things that like the strategy guide has as far as like um, egg groups and breeding and things like that. Um, so it, it's really just a more comprehensive guide um, as far as like the Pokemon Go and everything else like that. Um, definitely recommended to buy both. Um, so you have like the game guide to help you through the game, to walk you through the game. And then also the Pokedex. So this way you can list all the Pokemon that are in the game and new and their attacks and everything like that. Now, all of this, of course, is online. We live in a day and age now. Information, you know, is is readily available in the palm of our hand. I get that. I understand that. But for me, personally, I like the guides. I think they're really neat. The artwork is really cool. Um, you know, so uh, I just, you know, and I mean, being a collector of Pokemon... Like, I just really like buying the guides, and I really enjoy that. So, um, I own the uh, Pokedexes. Um, they started releasing the Pokedexes, um, you know, like, a as a separate guide. Um, in the original games, like, you know, Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, and Gold, Silver, and Crystal, usually at the end of the book, um, you had, like, the Pokemon and their moves and how they leveled up and where you could find them and all this kind of stuff. So, but probably around Generation... Um, Four with Diamond and Pearl and then eventually Platinum, they actually started um, releasing separate guides to the Pokedex. So, um, you know, and, and those guides were the entire Pokedex, not just limited to only the Pokemon that you could catch in that game. They were um, available to all, at that time, the current Pokemon. I think Generation 4, we had up to 490-something um, and then, you know, we had 386 with Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Then we went like 490. And then we went to five something with black and white, I want to say. And then, um, right before Sword and Shield got announced, and including Meltan and Melmetal, um, there was 807 known Pokemon, not counting Megas, not counting alternate forms, but strictly just like individual Pokemon. We had 807. So, um, and then with the release of Short and Shield, um, I'm not entirely sure exactly how many. Um, I'll have that, you know, on the screen uh, when I edit this. Uh, but, you know, there uh, there's almost a thousand Close to a thousand. Again, not counting like regional, you know, I mean, well, I guess you could count regional variants. Um, but anyways, just, just kind of like individual Pokemon. Um, and you know, we will count regional variants only because regional variants usually change typing. Um, you know, and then with Sword and Shield in particular, some of the regional variants that changed typing also gained evolutions. Um, like Galarian Meowth and, um, Galarian Linoon. So um, they actually gained evolution. So, I mean, in a sense, you can kind of count them as a different Pokemon, even though they are the same Pokemon from a different region or generation. They just have a different type change. But, you know, but they're still essentially a new Pokemon in, in the general sense of the term. Um, because they're not like an alternate form, you know, or, or, or they don't change like one type, you know, they're like a whole new. In a sense, a whole new Pokemon. So, but anyways, 
enough of that. <laughs> so yeah, let's go ahead and see what's inside. Um, I had already opened this up, actually, because um, <laughs> I was impatient when I got this. I couldn't wait. Uh, so I went ahead and opened it, but don't worry. I didn't really mess with it too much, you know, and everything. So it kept it nice. Um, I really try hard to keep my guides nice. Um, like I said, I'm a collector. Um, and I do use these, of course, but, you know, I, I still try to keep it nice. So, but yeah, this thing, if you, like I said, if you've never known what a guide is or ever used one, um, I, like I said, I'll have a link to this in the description to the strategy guide for Sword and Shield. Um, but this is, like I said, this is the Pokedex. So really most of this is, is just going to be the Pokemon and, you know, like the list of the Pokemon, um, how to obtain them, how to, you know, level them up or, you know, if you have to trade evolution or if you have to have them hold an item and then level them up or whatever the case may be. Um, as far as like evolving your Pokemon to complete the Pokedex, uh, without like catching each stage. Um, but yeah, so this basically just lists, um, all the Pokemon in Pokedex order of Sword and Shield. Um, there's only 400 Pokemon attainable in Sword and Shield. Um, so, you know, there's about 400 plus that are not available in Sword and Shield and cannot be traded through yet. Um, and I say that because if you have not seen the recent uh, Nintendo Direct, which came out um, January 9th of 2020, um, they actually announced some expansion pack where you can get an additional 200 plus Pokemon and there will be some new ones. Um, so, you know, you, one, one could say that this guide is now obsolete because, you know, now we know there's going to be at least 200 more and who's no, who knows if there's going to be like new types, um, uh, to current Pokemon or if like new Pokemon are going to gain like more moves or something. So, um, uh, but yeah, so, um, uh, stay tuned for that video eventually. So, um, but anyways, this just kind of helps you out. Like I said, it kind of just helps you just complete your guide. Um, this is a new, another numerical list for the Pokemon. So as you see here, you have, you know, you have basically the Pokemon with their image of what they look like. And then this, you know, as well as the page number where you can find them. But this also lists all the Pokemon in alphabetical order. So if it's easier for you, um, to know if one of your favorite Pokemon are in the game and you know what letter it starts with, that kind of helps you understand who's in and who's not. Um, so anyways, um, this tells you just how you can use the Pokedex in the game. Uh, Pokemon recommendations as far as like how to build your team. Um, like I said, it kind of is a little bit of a strategy guide, a little bit, you know, just kind of going more into detail about, you know, how to evolve Pokemon, trade Pokemon, um, you know, how to get, you know, build a good team with like abilities and uh, natures and stuff. Um, this is a little note, notation again about Pokemon Home, uh, which we found out we're going to get it in February, sometime in February of 2020. So, uh, I can't wait to hear more about that and how that's going to work and everything. So, um, hatching Pokemon eggs, um, you actually do get an egg in the game. Um, also telling you about, you know, how to inherit abilities. If you can see that in the, there we go. But how to inherit abilities, um, eggs, you know, by nature. And, uh, do note that if you use the male and female, the same Pokemon or same, or a male and female, from the same egg group, um, the female will always be the one hatched. So never the males. Um, you can get male or female, obviously, offspring. Um, but the female Pokemon is going to be whatever Pokemon um, is female. So unless you breed with Ditto, then you can do a male Ditto with, you know, whatever Pokemon, you know, that can hatch eggs. And you'll get that Pokemon, not Ditto. Unless you breed two Dittos. It's the only way you can get baby Dittos. <laughs> Which aren't really babies. But anyway, uh... So anyways, this is the egg groups. Now, I do believe some of these egg groups had changed just slightly with Sword and Shield. Um, some of them had kind of jumped, you know, egg groups and things, and some of them gained egg groups and stuff. So, uh, but this is a comprehensive guide of egg groups. And like I said before, this is, you know, a guide to use to, you know, kind of uh, go in and find out what natures you want, and abilities you want, and that kind of thing. So... Um, tells you, you know, if Pokemon are male and female, or if they're just male or just female. Um, some Pokemon do follow that rule. Um, some Pokemon are genderless, but you can still get eggs like uh, Magnemite, 
Uh, Voltorb, uh, Clink in its line, like those Pokemon can still breed, um, but they, you know, and still produce eggs. Um, now you cannot breed, obviously, baby Pokemon, Pokemon that are actually classified as babies. Um, the fossils, um, because you need the fossils to make those. And uh, Type Null and Savali, and then of course the legendaries. Type Null and, and Savali are considered legendaries. So you cannot breed legendaries. Um, the only mythical Pokemon that can breed is Manaphy, and you will get a uh, Fion, actually. And Fion does not evolve into Mana uh, Manaphy, if you uh, are curious about that. Um, you know, this kind of just goes into more in-depth about the wild area, you know, um, and, and about the weather in the wild area, and how to find certain Pokemon. Um, this, of course, is another guide about the wild area. Of course, you have another map of Galar, and then you have a more close-up map of Galar. And then the Pokedex entry. So this was something different that they had done that they haven't done before. Is they actually have just, it's just dedicated to the uh, Pokedex entry. So, you know, obviously Pokemon that you catch in the game will obviously show their, um... Pokedex entries, but you know Pokemon that you've already attained and reattain, um, you won't see their Pokedex entries. It'll just automatically default to do you want to send to a box, add to your party, check summary, or release. So, um, but this is kind of cool a little bit, you know, of each Pokemon, and uh, I'm not going to go through every single page, but you know, just kind of uh, showing you some neat artwork of each Pokemon. Uh, I'm talking about the regional variants between um, Galarian Zigzagoon and regular Zigzagoon. Um, so, you know, the Pokemon that have like Galarian forms will kind of, you know, uh, be showcased in there as well. Um, you know, so, and, and I mean, they, they did a really good job at selecting a certain Pokemon for this game, and, uh, my heart goes out to you if your favorite Pokemon did not make the cut. Um, I know a lot of people were really upset about that. Um, I was at first, I'll be honest, and I'm not gonna get too much into it in this video, but, you know, I mean, I, I've gotten over it, and, uh, and this was before, you know, the announcement of the, uh, the expansion, you know, and adding 200 more Pokemon, but, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, some of my favorite Pokemon are in here, like Abracadabra, Alakazam. Um, I really enjoy, I mean, my favorite type is Psychic Types. Um, my favorite Pokemon is Mew. And, uh, you know, so, the, you know, some Pokemon didn't make it. But, supposedly, um, we'll see what happens with the new update and see which Pokemon are coming back. Uh, what other Pokemon are coming, I mean. And stuff. So, but yeah, this is kind of like I said, just kind of goes in. Um, it goes into Alkarimi's all her all her different forms and how to obtain all her different forms. If you really want to be a purist and catch literally every, I think there's like 43 different types of uh, Alkarimi. So, um, if you're really a, you know, a, pur a purist, um, me personally, I am just gonna go and find my favorite looking one and go with that one. Um, caramel squirrel. I like caramel and I like strawberries. So I might go with that one, um, but the, as far as the typing, as far as the the attacks and everything else, everything is exactly the same. It just all depends on which particular um, style of alchemy you want. It's kind of like Vivlion was for X and Y. Um, that Pokemon could have like 20 different colored wingspans, but it also depended on what area in the world you actually caught one. Um, so that's really neat if you were able to trade up with some people, you know, in like Japan or Russia or in Europe, you know, that had the other forms of Vivlion, you know, you could catch those. So that was really a neat thing. Um, sorry, you guys can't really see the whole book. Book's taller than my camera. Let's see if I can fix that a little bit. There we go. Um, so yeah, you know, like I said, you know, you can kind of, See all the Pokemon and that. And then you see all the Pokemon that get Gigantamax effects or forms. Um, now, this is a little bit different than Dy um, Dynamaxing. Um, only certain Pokemon can Gigantamax. And the Pokemon have to have um, the ability to Gigantamax. All Pokemon, including these ones here, can Dynamax. But Gigantamax is basically a, um alternate form during battle, which is still three turns, and they get a specific G-Max move, um, different than um, Dynamaxing. So, but yeah, this is really neat on which Pokemon that you can uh, Gigantamax, 
And it's usually every single gen, a lot of Gen 8, Gen 1, Gen 5. Um, these are the special Pikachu and Eevees from the Let's Go Eevee series and Let's Go Pikachu series. Um, Flapple and Appleton actually have the same Gigantamax form. Um, it would have been kind of neat for both of them if they were going to be included to kind of have their own separate. Um, since Flapple is more of a flying type, dra you know, and Appleton is more of a land or ground uh, dragon. So that would have been really cool to have them have two separate uh, Dyna uh, Gigantamax forms, but eh, whatever. Um, you know, but Hatterene, Snorlax, literally has the earth on his body. <laughs> Got a tornado snake, like, I mean, this is just wild, but still cool. Um, so then this here just kind of goes into each Pokemon, tells you um, its moves, what move it can learn by level up. Um, what move it can learn by TMs, and then what moves it can learn by TRs. Now, TRs are like TMs, but TRs are one-time use. And then the level-up moves, which is really interesting that they changed here with Sword and Shield, was that um, Pokemon that would learn moves do that would not learn moves after trading, such as like Hunter into Gengar. If you traded it at a certain level, it would no longer learn those level up moves. It would be done. Well, Sword and Shield kind of fixed that. So you could get literally a Ghastly, evolve it into a Hunter, and then literally trade it as soon as it evolves into Hunter and to Gengar, and it would still learn level up moves. So you could go back in. Um, if you go to any Pokemon Center and talk with the guy, you can actually, um, you know, learn whatever moves you want. Um, that that Pokemon can learn as far as like you know leveling. Um, some Pokemon can learn move turtle moves. Um, some of the Pokemon like the starter Pokemon can learn like the fire pledge or the leaf pledge or whatever. Um, you know, um, it also tells you like what this Pokemon is like weak to. It's like base stats as far as like HP, attack, and defense. Um, what abilities it can learn as well as its hidden abilities. Um, so that's really neat. Um. And like I said, this has all the Pokemon in their Pokedex order. Tells you which Pokemon can evolve by stones. Um, and I know they fixed like the evolutions with like Glaceon and Leafeon that actually use stones now in this gen to evolve, which is um, always cool. And honestly, in my honest opinion, again, you know, e there's there's enough stones now that you could literally evolve Eevee with just pure stones, like the first three, like Vaporeon, Flareon, and uh, Jolteon. You could literally evolve each one now with like a specific stone. Um, you know, I, I've done like, you know, my own little like, um, guides and stuff like that where it's like, oh, well, you know, I mean, I can use a, you know, a dusk stone for, or a moonstone for Umbreon, a sunstone for Espeon instead of like high friendship during the day or night, depending on which one you want. Um, Sylveon, I would probably use maybe like a shiny stone, perhaps, um, that one's a little tricky or, you know, because you, you basically evolve uh, Eevee into Sylveon by, you know, not high friendship, but high attraction, um, which the game in Sword and Shield may not differentiate between the two. But um, and then level it up with a fairy type move and it evolves into Sylveon. So Sylveon's really easier than Umbreon and Espeon. Um, but I think there's enough stones available now that you could actually evolve um, Eevee with all stone evolutions now with the current evolutions that are available now if they start adding like dragon typing steel typing you know maybe use like a metal coat and trade or dragon scale and trade or something like that that would be really cool um be a lot easier than just trying to do high friendship moves uh, but anyway so yeah you know like i said this goes into the guide tells you all the moves attacks um it even tells you what a group it's in um, so if you want to do like Pokemon specific instead of just going like straight to the egg moves and going it that way. So really neat. Um, oops. Like I said, here's the adventure data. So this is all the moves. So this kind of tells you, um, all the moves that are in the game in alphabetical order. So, um, it tells you like the name, the type, the, what kind it is, if it's physical, um, status or special, um, how many power, how much power it is, how much accurate it is, the PP and the range. If it's normal as far as like just one-on-one -on -one, or if it's, um, many others, which is an attack that will affect all Pokemon in play, or if it's just yourself, like a status, you know, move or it's just yourself, 
Um, but that's that there. Um, I know they cut some moves out of Sword and Shield that were available before. And honestly, I think that's right. I mean, you know, you can't literally keep having every single move, add new moves, and then, you know, like, I mean, there, there's some moves that basically repeat just different names. So I am not upset at all about them getting rid of certain moves. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, then you have like priority moves, max moves, and the G max moves. These are the ones that are specific to like Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing. Um, you have the move tutor, tutor moves. Um, and then how to obtain TMs. So it lists all the TMs and where to find them. Um, how to obtain TRs, which TRs can actually be bought with Watts. Um, that's a new mechanic in the game as well, where you can go to different dens that are light up. Get um, X amount of Watts per den. Um, you can also find Pokemon that are glowing that will also give you Watts. Um, if you beat them or capture them in battle. Um, and then you go to these guys, look, you know, these guys here. Um, a lot of them are found in the wild area. And then you can purchase items from them. You can also purchase items for cooking and everything else, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, and then the Pokemon moves reverse look up, you know. Uh, so this basically has, shows every single move. It's color-coded to tell you what type it is, if it's normal, water, flying, grass, etc. And then it also tells you which Pokemon can learn that specific move, um, which is really handy, you know. And, I mean, this game, this guy just really just breaks it down even more and more and more um, to meet every need, you know, depending on how you go about it. Um, and then, let's see, it also lists the items. Oh, these are the abilities. Um, it should list all the items, too. Um, there's the Pokemon abilities in reverse. Natures, characteristics. Oh, here's the items. Yep, items, Pokeballs, um, berries, all other goodies, all other items, you know, status items, candy, rare candies, those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, treasures, like the fossils, the pearl strings, you know, nuggets, things you can get lots of money for. Um, and then the shops, what you can buy at shops, not at the Wad people, but the shops, um, which is kind of neat. It gives you another little guide here as far as your type matchups, the battle points, which you can buy with battle points, uh, with the battle tower that's in here, um, and then the credits, you know, and then that's the back of the guide there. Now, this guide also came with a poster, neat little poster. On one side of the poster, it literally has all the Pokemon that can be attained in the game, which is really super cool. And then, and this is a pretty good sized poster too. And then on the back of it, you have the map of Galar. And then like the more drawn, comprehensive, like real looking type map. So, and this is a pretty good sized poster. If I had to guess, it's probably by four foot by about two and a half feet. So it's a pretty good sized poster. Um, and it just lists everything in detail, which is really neat. Um, and this came with the guide as well. Um, I only paid, I think, like $15 for this guide. It was really cheap compared to the strategy guide, but it's also paperback. Um, the guide was hardback. The, the guide I purchased was hardback. Um, all guides came in uh, paperback except for Sun and Moons. Um, Sun and Moons actually came in hardback. And I believe Black and White released an edition, too, that was in hardback. Uh, but usually they're all paperback. Um, X and Y actually had a more smaller like pokedex so that was very interesting the guide was also smaller too it was really weird it was like a quarter of this size um so but then they started going back to these bigger guides which i like better you can fit more detail in there you don't have to cram everything so tiny and small um so but yeah guys anyways like i said check out my other videos um i'll have a link in the description about the sword and shield guide um so I um, appreciate you guys for watching. Thanks so much. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.